Hey Dead Grinners, this is Dead Grin. Uh, I know I haven't uh, made any update videos lately on the Great Siamen, but uh, it's just this whole week I've been uh, waiting mostly on parts. I'm afraid it might take another week or two. But today I'm bringing you another thing that I've been working on. Uh, I started this yesterday, but I bought the figure I think last week. A friend of mine um, messaged me and he asked me if I could, you know, he asked me to make a, he basically commissioned me if I could make a figure for him. Um, I was hesitant only because really, honestly, I don't have the time to, uh, you know, be taking commission orders at this moment anyways. But uh, I agreed. I was like, all right, you know, while I'm waiting on parts for my other customs, uh, I agreed to make this one for him because basically I'm about to. I think I might end up getting some of the parts that I need for this one as well at the same time. So I agreed on the project. Uh, this is my custom Dabura action figure. Uh, I didn't use SH figure arts, any SH figure arts as a base. I didn't use any Dragon Stars as a base. This time around, I ended up using a uh, WWE Elite action figure. Um, some of you guys might recognize it as Big Cass. He's uh, the reason why I chose that one specifically was because it was a lot taller than some of the other elite wrestlers, and he had you know some of the shapes that I wanted as far as uh, his muscle proportions, you know, for um, for the sculpt that I wanted to do. It's um. It's taken some time, not in the sense that, uh, you know, I mean, the sculpting takes a while, but that's not what I took so long to start actually making the figure. What took so long was actually trying to figure out where some of the lines were going to go, where, what I was going to do, because there's certain issues and certain things that I didn't want to lose with this figure. Um, SH Figure Arts is known for the all the articulation points, you know, and the beautiful sculpts that they uh, make for the figures. Dragon Stars is a more affordable um, figure with less articulation, but it's still, I, I I still think the articulation for those Dragon Stars is pretty good. And uh, these WWE Elite figures, um, they're very limited with their articulation, but they do have some, you know, they do offer some pretty good ones. Like, um, they this one does have a full, you know, shoulder art, uh, rotation. Oh, Never mind, sorry, full shoulder articulation. It only has a single jointed elbow. Uh, the bicep, you know, can uh, it has a swivel on the bicep. Ab crunch. Um, you can turn the hips. Oh, ab crunch right there. The hips can be turned, and uh, it has a double, double jointed uh, elbows. The boot itself. You know swivels and the the shoe itself can too but it, you have to put a little bit more pressure on that and uh, I don't want to do that right now oh also the uh, the wrists uh, you know that you can turn them you know all the way around and it's on a swivel so it affords you some more stuff so I wanted to retain the figures as much as the as much articulation as I can from the figure itself. So that was the biggest thing I had to figure out when I started sculpting on it because some of the the, the problem with the mill put the mill put uh, putty is that it's a very um it's very rigid, it's very hard when it does harden, which is you know what you want, but at the same time if there are points where you need more flexibility, it will crack. Uh, which is why I haven't used it on the great Siaman. But uh, I decided to use it on the Dabura figure. Now, what I did first was uh, I sanded down the legs only because I didn't, in case, you know, I, I, I did sculpt the pants. I didn't want all those muscle lines to show through. Um, I also sanded down the boots because the boots had too much uh, texture and laces and stuff. I'll probably end up sculpting over them just because I wanted to look more like Dragon Ball boots. Um, 
I also sanded um, parts where I knew, you know, there was going to be a lot of paint issues, like paint rub issues, uh, especially uh, on the, you know, behind the, the legs. I ended up using my Dremel to sand in there, I mean, to grind down the joint, and then I sanded it a little bit over. Um, I also washed the figure, you know, before I started doing anything else. And then after it was all prepared and everything, uh, then I started laying down some things. Like I ended up cutting out some styrene. I made a belt for him. And then I put a disc here. When I put the disc for his belt, it's when I realized that it was going to hinder the waist articulation. Now if I, you know, twist the waist, I'm afraid I might pop the belt off. I still cut it in a way where it's not gonna get in the way a lot but it's still there is still that issue but i talked to my friend and he didn't mind so much about that point as long as we kept everything else and then after that what i started doing yesterday everything you see that sculpted the the pants of uh, part of this pants uh, the the belt the vest and the the thing that goes around his neck I did all that yesterday. Um, I, you know, put two parts of proxy of the middle putt, and then uh, the, I find that the best results are when you you don't use your fingers as much because you you don't end up impressing your your fingerprints on it. I I use uh, nail care sticks, you know, or cuticle sticks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you can also use toothpicks. I've seen uh, my friend Kenny Boy use toothpicks. I've seen a man named uh, Craig Warwick use um, the the cuticle sticks. I saw videos by Glenn Beck. He was doing. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if if I got the name right, Glenn Beck, because there was a customizer named Glenn who was a really good. He was a badass, and he used to use a. Uh, toothpicks as well um i prefer the cuticle sticks only because it, it has a the flat you know line to smooth out lines and this like uh, the, the point to be able to you know do lines itself now i've never sculpted this much stuff on a figure but uh the parts i'm most proud of are easily the the the, the shirt and the thing that goes around his uh, neck, I, I still need to scope more over it, but this is, you know, what I did last night. And basically all the upper body. All the upper body is on point. I think it looks great. I think it looks close enough to the pictures that I was referencing. The pants are another thing. Um, the lines that I made into the pants, they look pretty, uh, they look amateur. I don't know if the camera can pick that up that good. But, um. Uh, I don't mind. It looks pretty good. I showed my friend, and he doesn't mind either. He, he, he thinks it looks pretty good. Um, definitely learned some stuff after you know after I did this figure. Like uh, there's so much that I learned from it. I still need to re. I, I'm gonna do the the same thing I did to this one. I'm gonna do on this leg, and then I might have to actually poof out some of it a little bit more. But I have to do it in a way where the articulation isn't hindered. And then I might have to sculpt something over each of the knees. And like I said before, the boots. Um, there's one more like layer that I have to put on top of this. And um, I also want to work on the, like around the wrists. I want to make it look like he has a, a, a continuous long, like long sleeve shirt. But uh, yeah. This Dabura figure has really pushed me to my limits. Like, I'm surprised I did all this in one day. Um, the way I kept doing it is I would do it in parts. Uh, like, first I made the belt, and then I made the shirt. And then I used, um, I put him in hot water afterwards because, like I've said before in my other videos, you know, if you heat it up with water for 10 minutes and then let it dry for like 10 to 15 minutes, it cuts the curing process from like 24 hours to, you know, 30 minutes, which is great. So I worked on parts. I first I worked on the belt and the vest, and I did the pants, and then I did the 
the the shirt up here I'm still not done with the back and I'm gonna continue on some of the stuff I need to do something right here I uh, need to fill in a little bit more on the back and just like this I have to do it over here and I need to finish his belt but yeah man this Dabura figure is coming out great and what surprised me the most is that it's actually in scale with the great Saya man figure that I'm making let, let me just um, get it real quick And that's pretty good man like i know the double figure looks way bigger but if when you see the anime you can see the the difference in height and i also saw this scale that i don't know if it was used on the actual production or or toriyama used it or something but i saw like this somebody do did all the characters from the majin buu saga like goku vegeta great uh gohan and then dabura majin Buu, uh everybody like that like in the same and then they had all the the lines to so you can see how different in height they were and gohan looks about this tall next to Dab to dabura you know the demon king so i'm actually very happy i i was exciting to me is that this is gonna be i'm gonna be able to actually take a pictures of both of these next to each other when i'm done and uh you know it was easily great Siaman's best fight in the series you know having to face off against uh, dabura so great Siaman versus dabura I'm, I'm hoping to take some pics of that before i end up sending off the the dabura figure to my friend but um yeah man you know this is uh um this is a project that i've been really proud of and i'm, I'm happy that I'm making both the great Saiyaman, which is one of my favorite Gohans, and, you know, uh, Dabura, which is one of my favorite characters that was very underutilized in the series. But, um, all right, guys, I've been ranting on a little too long. Um, hopefully, I can show you guys another update on this, and as soon as I get some of the other things that I need for the great Saiyaman, you know, I'll, I'll end up making the next video for the great Saiyaman, so... If you guys like you know what I've shown you so far, you know please like I said before hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, uh, make sure to hit the notification bell. If you're seeing this in the morning, good morning, and uh, for everyone else, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.